Hello and welcome. My name is Meeplis, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are talking about what I'm pretty sure is going to be a new favorite book for me, namely Shadow Life by Hiromi Gato and Anne Zhu, published by First Second in 2021 with the tagline, when death comes too soon, fight dirty. Content notes for chronic health issues, death is a character, and desexualized nudity. Looking at the creative team, according to her website, quote, Hiromi Goto is an immigrant from Japan who gratefully resides in the Kaugen territory. Her first novel, Chorus of Mushrooms, won the 1995 Commonwealth Writers Prize Best First Book, Canada and Caribbean Region, and was the co-winner of the Canada-Japan Book Award. Her second adult novel, The Kappa Child, was awarded the 2001 James Tiptree Jr. Memorial Award. She's published three novels for children and youth, a book of poetry, and a collection of short stories for adults. Her other honors include the Sunburst Award and the Carl Brandon Parallax Award. She is currently at work trying to decolonize her relationship to writing and land. End quote. And, quote, Anne Zhu is an Ignatz-nominated cartoonist and illustrator working in Baltimore. She graduated in 2017 with a BFA in illustration from the Maryland Institute College of Art. She is the illustrator of graphic novels Shadow Life and Measuring Up, both available for purchase wherever books are sold. She is also illustrating upcoming middle grade graphic novel Unhappy Camper, end quote. What kinds of keywords came to mind reading this book? Rediscovery, family, community, love, protection, vacuums, and life. Quote, 2022 Asian Pacific American Literature Award winner for adult fiction, 2022 LA Times Book Prize finalist, poet, and novelist, Hiromi Goto effortlessly blends wry, observational slice-of-life literary fiction with poetic, magical realism in the tender and surprising graphic novel, Shadow Life with haunting art from debut artist and Zhu. When Kumiko's well-meaning adult daughters place her in an assisted living home, the 76-year-old widow gives it a try, but it's not what she wants to be. She goes on the lam and finds a cozy bachelor apartment, keeping the location secret even while communicating online with her eldest daughter. Kumiko revels in the small daily pleasures, decorating as she pleases, eating what she wants, and swimming in the community pool. But something has followed her from her former residence, Death's Shadow. Kumiko's sweet life is shattered when the Death's Shadow swoops in to collect her. With her quick mind and sense of humor, Kumiko, with the help of her friends, new and old, is prepared for the fight of her life. How long can an old woman thwart fate? End quote. A book I devoured in one day. This book was a delight on so many levels, while still paying justice to the realities of being in your 70s. Looking at the writing, I was not surprised to learn that Hiromi has a history of poetry, as this book struck me as very poetic. Decompressed frames linger on scenic details in a way I am predisposed to really enjoy. And perhaps I'm just teeing up another compliment, but I feel like this sort of story is often the kind where I struggle to tell some of the characters apart, but while we do see some flashbacks, I never found myself struggling with who was who. But here, I felt like each character was incredibly distinct and on their own journey. Looking at the different kinds of representation included in the graphic novel, I think the most front and center one is the way our bodies change as we get older, and in particular, the way that your body might betray you as you get older. While this is a story about Kumiko reclaiming her life, it is also not just one thing or another. There is a new lease on life, but it's a real struggle against her own mortality. As someone who is not a complete noob about aging, but also feels pretty awkward and unfamiliar about the subject, I really appreciated this closer and more honest look at this underrepresented part of life. I also feel like it forced me to reconsider some of the cliches I had taken in about what aging means. Sexuality was also a key part of this book that stood out. A pretty effortless and drama-free representation of someone who has been attracted to more than one gender across a long life. The love story element of Shadow Life was so incredibly heartwarming and sweet. It also reminds us that no matter how old we get, we can still change, love romantically, forgive, move on, and find fresh community. Race and racial diversity also popped up in a few different ways. The treatment of Japanese people in Canada during World War II is discussed by two characters who experienced it and came away from it with two different perspectives. 
it is also made incredibly obvious that the overall supporting cast is also made up of racially diverse people. More of a show rather than tell story, the topic of gender didn't come up at all. So, while I'm not sure how each character identifies, it doesn't really matter, and they all felt like they were somewhere slightly different on the spectrum, and there was certainly no us versus them with anyone's gender being better or worse than anyone else's gender. Class is, again, not explored to any great depth, but we have a main character who buys secondhand vacuums, takes the bus, hasn't had access to robust home care, and isn't afraid to nab free stuff from the curb, which speaks to a certain level of working class hustle. To conclude, with all that said and done, I have not talked myself out of this being a new favorite, so I'm rating this book five stars. Bye y'all, keep reading an organized and capitalist depression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. 